Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the HESI. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the HESI Admission Assessment Exam Review, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Right now, we are in the process of solving problems having to do with conversions from fractions to decimals. From fractions to decimals, there are three concepts that they test on the exam, fractions, decimals, and percentage, percentages. And you have to be able to go back and forth between one to the other, from percentages to fractions, from fractions to decimals, from decimals to percentages, and so on and so forth. After having done these 10 problems, we did, we did, we did one through seven yesterday. We are on page number 24. We're going to do question number eight, nine, and 10 today. After having done these 10 sample questions that, they, that you see on page number 24, if you feel that you need more help, if you feel that you need to have more practice, there are some videos here that you can watch in the series of basic math, in the series of basic math from day number 51 through 65. And you may find some of those videos helpful. There are 15 of them as you can see from 51 to 65. You don't have to watch all 15 of them. Watch 51, 52, watch one or two and decide for yourself whether or not it's worth your time. Number Number 8 is what we are about to do. Number 8 is asking us to convert 2 and 7 8 into decimal. 2 and 7 8 into decimal. You have to know your 8s. You have to know your 8s. We learned our math. Uh, we, we learned our 8s in the series of basic math on day number 32. Watch the video. Learn how to, how to tackle your 8s. You must know your 8s. You must know your quarters. You must know your fifths. You must know your tenths. And you must know your thirds. These are essential, vital, fundamental bits of information that you must know by heart. Do you understand? You must have all of these bits of information at your fingertips. What are we going to do with 7 8? Well, 7 8, 7 8, we have to understand that 7 8 is nothing more, nothing more than 6 8 plus an 8. 7 8 is nothing more than 6 8 plus, uh, plus an 8. I hope you are able to see that. And 6 8, 6 8, if you have 6 8, if you were to reduce, if you were to reduce it, if you divide top and bottom by two, six divided by two is three, and eight divided by two is four. Six eighths is just three quarters. Six eighths is just three quarters, and three quarters we know is seventy-five percent. Six eighths we know is seventy-five percent, or 0.75. And how do we know that? Because a quarter, a quarter of anything is twenty-five percent. If quarter is twenty-five percent. 3 quarter would have to be 3 times as much. If 1 quarter is 25%, 3 quarters would have to be 3 times 25, which is 75%. So that was the easy part. 6 eighths, 6 eighths is just 3 quarters incognito. 6 eighths is just 3 quarters incognito, which we know is 75%. The word incognito is something that we learned on day number 42 in our vocabulary video. In the event that you're interested in improving your vocabulary, just type in vocabulary words, day number 42. And that's where we learned the word incognito in disguise. Six eight is nothing more than three quarters sitting there incognito. That's th that's three quarters. So that was the easy part. That was the easy part. This part is just seventy five percent. What about one eighth? Well, let's find out, shall we? One eighth, one eighth. I hope you are able to see is nothing more than half of a quarter. If you have a quarter, and if you take a half of that, you will end up with one eighth. Which makes perfect sense. If you have a quarter, I can show it here. There's a circle. We're going to break it up into. There you go. Now we have quarters, and if you take half of the quarter, this amount that you see there is an eighth. This is an eighth. Why is it an eighth? Because it's a half of a quarter, and there are going to be eight eighths. There are going to be eight eighths. If you were to continue this thing, there are going to be eight eighths right there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Of course. Eight eighths make a whole. A quarter, uh, 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 an eighth is just half of a quarter. And we know quarter is 25%. We already know that quarter of something is 25%. So an eighth, an eighth is simply half of 25%. An eighth is simply a half of 25%. And half of 25% is how much? Well, we know half of 24. We know half of 24. If you divide 24 by 2, you will get 12. Half of 24 is 12. Therefore, it stands to reason that half of 25 must be, would have to be, 
12 and a half. 12 and a half. How do we write that in decimals? Well, 12 and a half would simply be 0 0.125. 0 0.125. That's it, we're almost done. And 6 8, and 6 8 is 75%, which can be written as which can be written as 0 0.75. And 8, we just found out, is simply 0 0.125, 12.5%. There we go. We have our 6 eighths, we have our 1 eighth, we just have to simply add up these two decimals and we are home free. What can we do it? We have to add up these two decimals. Let's do them right here. Seven. Why don't we do it right under here? That's 1 eighth. This is 1 eighth. And then 6 eighth. 6 eighth is going to be 0.75. 6 8 is going to be 0.75. Before we forget and before we mess up, before we lose our concentration, let's put a zero here to hold the decimal place. Here we have, here we had three decimal places, 0 0.125, 0 0.125 is three decimal places, 0 0.75 only has two decimal places. Let's take a zero at the end so that we do not uh, mess it up when we're doing the addition. Let's add them up now. Now it's easy to see 5 plus 0 is 5, 2 plus 5 is 7, and 1 plus 7 is 8. It is simply 0.875, 7, 8, 7, 8 is simply 0.875, here we have 2 and 7, 8, we just found out 7, 8 is 0 0.875, 0 0.875, there you go, there is your answer, there is your answer. So that's one way of figuring out, that's one way of figuring it out, figuring out 7, 8, but whether you're trying to figure out 7, 8, or 6, 8, or 5, 8, or 3, 8, you must know your 8th. You must have to, you must understand the basic concept, the fundamental concept is the realization that an 8th is simply a half of a quarter. An 8th is simply a half of a quarter. And since quarter is 25%, 8th would have to be 12, and 8th would have to be 12 and a half percent. 12 and a half percent expressed in decimal is simply 0.125. You must know that. Another way, could, another way we could have figured out, I'm going to show you one more way, another way we could have figured out 7, 8, instead of going about, instead of breaking up 7, 8, instead of breaking up 7, 8 into 6, 8 and 1, 8, another way we could have done our 7, 8 is this. It's the second method. Another way we can figure out our 7, 8 is to simply understand that the 7, 8 is nothing more than 8, 8 minus an 8. And 8, 8 is the whole thing. Oh, I just erased it. 8, 8 was the whole circle, which is the 100%. 8, 8 is 1, which is 100%. So it's simply 100% minus 12.5%. And 100% minus 12.5% is 87.5%, which is exactly what we had here, 0.875. So that's another way of figuring out that 7, 8 is 0.875 expressed in decimal. Let's move on then. We took too long. We spent too much time on it. Number nine, question number nine. I need a break. Question number nine. Question number nine is asking us to convert eleven and eleven fifteen into decimal. As you can see. 11 and 15 have nothing in common. The only way we can figure out what that would be in decimal is to actually do it out. You're going to have to divide 11, 11 and 11, 11 15. This would have no choice but to divide our 11 by 15. And we can clearly see 15 is a larger number than 11. We cannot start the process. We have to introduce a decimal point here, decimal, and then introduce a zero here. Now we have to figure out, now we have to figure out how many 15 are there in 110? Let's do it here. How many 15 are there in 110? We know, we know 45. I know 45 is 3 times 15. That I do know. 45. That's I just know. It's very simple. Let's add another 45 to it. Let's add another 45 to it. 45 plus 45 is 90. If 45 represents 315, then 90 must represent 615. Because you have 45 and 45. This is 90. We need to get all the way up to 110. There's, I think there's room to go one more round of 15. If you go one more round, you get 5 and a 10 here. And since we, since we added one more 15, that must represent 715. Are you with me? 
We can't go many more than that because if you add one more 15, we're going to end up at 120. We only have 110. So it's 7. Put a 7 here. 7 times 15 is 105. We just found it. Watch what happens. 110 minus 105 is just a 5. And produces 0. 50 has 3 15s. 3 15s are 45. When we subtract 45 from 50, we end up with a 5 again. If you stick a 0, we'll have another 3. That's 45. Minus 45 is the remainder is 5. As long as we can keep it in the same remainder, it's going to keep repeating. Therefore, we come to conclusion that 11 divided by 15, 11 divided by 15 is simply 0.73333 repeating. 0.3333 repeating. That's it, we are done. Therefore 11, therefore 11 and 1115 is simply 11, 11 point 7333. 7, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3. And that is your answer. Let's do the very last one. Let's do the very last one where they are asking us to convert 1125th. 1125th. Now, let me redo this problem a little bit differently. Let me redo this problem a little bit differently, which is not going to be the exact answer, but it's going to be a damn good estimate. And that's damn good estimate is all you need in the exam. You don't have to do the precise calculation in the exam. Nobody's asking us to do the precise calculation. As a matter of fact, doing the precise calculation in the exam is a sheer waste of time. It's a sheer stupidity to sit there and do, the, do out each problem precisely because it's a multiple choice exam. As, you can, as long as you're able to recognize what the right answer is, you're fine. If you do approximation, as long as you make a decent approximation, you should be able to pick one answer choice that comes closest to what you're looking for. Let me redo this problem. I don't like the way we did it. The way we did this problem was very nerdy, very geeky, very classical, very orthodox, very conventional, very traditional, very academic. I don't like any of that. Let's redo it. Let's do it quick and dirty way. Here's the quick and dirty way. I'm going to show you. Okay. The reason, reason why it came to my mind all of a sudden is because as I looked at number 10, that's the precise method we're going to apply. Uh, that's the precise method. The method that, I'm, that we're going to just learn is the precise method that we're going to use in number 10. Watch what happens. We have 11 over 15. If you can, if you can convert the bottom, when, when somebody asks you, listen very carefully, when somebody asks you to convert a fraction into a decimal, your job should be to convert the bottom amount, bottom amount, into some multiple of 10. Uh, maybe a 10 or a 100 or a 1000, some multiple of 10. Because if you have multiples of 10 at the bottom, then it's very easy to convert in decimal. If you're dividing something by 10, you just move the decimal place one spot. If you're dividing something by 100, you move the decimal place two spots. It's very simple. Can you, can, can you convert 15 into 100 or something to be close to 100? If you cannot get exactly 100, then your job should be to make the decimal, to, to, your job should be to make the denominator, the bottom part, something as close to 100 as possible, as quickly as possible. Well, we just did the work. We just realized a little while ago we did the work and we know that if you want to multiply top and bottom by 7, oh, it wasn't a 7, 15 times 7, 35, 5, carry 3, yeah, it's 105. There you go. That's about as close we're going to get to 100. If we multiply top and bottom by 7, what we end up is 77 over 105. 77 over 105. Okay, watch, keep listening. 77 over 105, I'm going to argue that is approximately same as 77 over 100. Are you with me so far? And therefore, and therefore, one would argue that 11 over 15 is approximately 0 0.77. 0 0.77, that's all. Now, what we have to understand is, what we have to understand is that here, we approximately 105 as 100, 77 divided by 100, is it going to be a little bit less than 0.77 or is it going to be a little bit more than 0.77? In other words, when you're approximating, appro approximating is fine and dandy, but you must, be com you must be cognizant, you must be thoroughly cognizant of whether you're underestimating or overestimating. That's what tells you where to look for in the right answer. Is the right answer going to be something slightly more than 0.77 or is the correct answer going to be something slightly less than 0.77? It's going to be slightly less than 0.77 because we're dividing by 105, not 100. When you divide something by a large amount, it comes down. Correct answer, whatever it is, it's going to be something 
close to 0.77, something close to 0.77, but slightly less than that. How, how do we show that? In the exam, in your, in your work, by putting a little negative sign on top to remind you that 0.77, to remind you, listen very carefully, to remind you that this 0.77 is in fact an overestimation. Since 0.77 is an overestimation, therefore the correct answer has got to be something a little less than that. Pick one answer choice. Among the four answer choices, I guarantee you there's going to be only one answer choice that's going to be slightly less than 0.77. And that's this guy right here, 0.73. That's all, that's your answer. We didn't have to do all the other mumbo jumbo. And that's the exact same technique we're going to use in number 10. In number 10, that's it, we're done, so I need the room. In number 10, Abarayat, instead of erasing everything, let's do number 10 here. Number 10 is very straightforward, very simple. In number 10, they're asking us to convert 11 over 25, 11 over 25, into decimal. Again, our job should be to convert the bottom number into a hundred or something as close to 100, 100 as possible, as quickly as possible. Well, in this case, it's very simple, it's 25. If you multiply 25 by 4, if you multiply 25 by 4, that's exactly 100. Since we're multiplying the bottom by 4, we must multiply the top by 4. There you go. Since, since we're multiplying 11 over, 11 over 25 by 4 divided by 4, 4 over 4 is just 1. We haven't changed its value. If you take any quantity, any quantity that is given to you, if you multiply it by 1, you're not changing its value, it's still the same amount. 11 over 25 is still 11 over 25, except, except we're going to write it as, we're going to write it as 11 times 4, which is 44, and 25 times 4, which is 100. Instead of writing it as 11 over 25, instead of writing it as 11 over 25, we're going to write it as 44 over 100. Or 44 over 100 is just 0.44. Nothing to it. Same exact method as number 9, the only difference is that in number 9 we were unable to get the precise answer because we, when we multiply 15 by 7, by always try to multiply by a whole number, don't, don't be cute, don't try to multiply by 6.5 or 6 and 3 quarter, it's a waste of time. That defeats the purpose, the whole purpose is to approximate, not to get the precise value. So if you multiply by a whole number, the one number that can multiply 15 by a whole number uh, and come, come as close to 100 is 7. 15 times 7 is 105. If you had you multiplied 15 by 8, it would have been too large. Had you multiplied 15 by 6, it would have been too small. It would have been 90. So come as close as you can. 105 is about as close as we can get. And therefore, it's approximately 0.77. And since we are overestimating, the correct answer is going to be slightly under 0.77. Just go with it. That's all. We are done with this topic. Tomorrow, we'll begin the topic of converting decimals to fractions, the reverse process, from decimals to fractions. Okay? I know.